after uh, graduation, you end up taking a job as a janitor at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. At that time in your life, what did you think of your future plans? I had one. There was no future. <clears throat> it was more like, okay, great. You're going to jail or you're going to be a drug dealer. That was, that was my future right there. There's no ifs and buts about it. And then the watches at the airport. How did that all unfold? Not just one of those see monkey do monkey things. You see somebody do something, you do it. And guess what? When you when you don't have money, if you, you think that it's very easy, you know. That's why I say the world's dumbest criminals. <laughs> that was my. <laughs> that was me. The world's dumbest criminal. I forgot they got cameras. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. But you know, but I did some smart thing. I did do some smart thing. I, I stole the watch. That was dumb. And plus, you know, I thought I was like cool. But and there were fifty watches, right? Fifty to fifty-five watches, yes. But I did one thing that was actually cool that saved my is the fact that I didn't sell them, I just gave them away. That saved my because if I would have sold them and made money from it, I'd probably been in jail two to five years. That's a major felony, especially in that report. So I just gave them away. I didn't even sell them. They went to, they came and arrested me. They went and got all the watches back. So at 19, as you said, you're like five foot nine. Then over the next two years, you end up sprouting to six foot eight. You said that at that point, after you'd really grown, basketball came to you almost easy. How so? I said everything in my life is, is uh, basically, it's actually that. You know, I, I, I said in my book, I said this quote too, I said, guess what? I stole everything I saw in my community. I don't know why I keep saying it because, I, you know, I've seen a lot of guys that should have been very rich and famous, so successful, and go to jail, get killed and stuff like that. I've seen it a lot, dude. And I was a nobody. And I walked to the gym and see him every day. And the next thing you know, I saw growing and growing, started getting better and better. The next thing you know, it's like, wow, I'm here. At uh, 22 years old, you end up deciding to accept a scholarship to southeastern Oklahoma. Why did you? Because it, it seemed for a while you, that really was something you were less than interested in. No, no, really. I, I wanted to go back to school. I wanted to go back to school. I, I had to do something. You know, living on the streets wasn't what the well, When did that kind of, you make that decision that you wanted to, you know, well, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was my first main priority to go to school, you know. My first thing is to stay in the house and not be homeless. That's the first thing. Um, <laughs> but when those guys came in the door, you know, that was an opportunity for me. I could have said, I could have easily said no. I could have easily said that. If I would have said no, I wouldn't be here. Very simple. If I would have said no, get the way, hell away. Because other people had called you too, right? The other coaches and you, just, not, you not, wouldn't not. answer the phone? I never answered the phone. They called me all the time. I said, no. What? We talked to them. They, they showed up. Instead of calling, they showed up. If I would have said no to those guys at the door, they would have never came back. For more clips from this interview, visit GrahamBensinger.com.